Hey guys, on here, we are back for episode nine of season one of The Sandman. This is our penultimate episode. After this, we just have the finale, and it's been a wild ride so far. In the last episode, uh, Rose's quest to find her brother has started to progress quite a lot. She managed to actually track down the location of where he was with the help of Dream, helping her guide her, use uh, their powers in the dream world to kind of track them down, find the nightmare that was actually latched onto him, but in a non-malicious way. The one, one of the ones he's been looking for that is involved with, you know, the, the, the missing uh, arcana from his realm, one of which was this one called Gold, who has latched onto Jed to try to actually help help uh, rather than be the nightmare she was made to be was using her powers to try to protect him from his waking life, trying to become a dream, trying to become something positive, something more than what she was born to be. But after that whole thing came to a head, unfortunately before Rose could actually get to him in time to help him in the waking world, the Corinthian managed to beat her to the punch, uh, giving the, the foster father his well-deserved upcomings. Um, however, Gold didn't get quite such a favorable fate as going against her function, her purpose. Um, Morpheus stood his ground, put his foot down, maybe hypocritically, and banished her to the Shadow Realm or to Eternal Darkness, kind of like whole ethereal timeout as punishment for trying to go against the grain. Which I think is him his own way of like trying to flex his position, which has been greatly weakened in his realm since he was captured and it had been laid to waste. A lot of people's uh, faith in him has been shaken, and a lot of his own staff. So he's kind of putting up a front, I think, in this way, and trying to stay sturdy. Because there was a look of pain in his eyes, and maybe I'm giving too much credit, but I, I feel like we've seen him grow. But I feel like there's a lot of this pressure that is weighing down on him to be what he was. And that's that's all I can hope is maybe that that's the case and maybe he can change. He doesn't believe so, but maybe he can. Because I feel like he has. But I don't know. It's a really interesting episode. I love the stuff that they were touching upon, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Uh, just based on the title of this episode, because I was talking about in the last one with the Corinthian was just kind of showing up. We caught back up with him after that little ring, uh, like a little get together of murderers. We're trying to get him as their like guest speaker. I think we might actually be getting that now because I was kind of disappointed that I thought we just time skipped past that. But it looks like that's going to come up in this episode because this episode is called Collectors. And that's what their code word was for themselves. So we're going to go ahead and hop into this. So if you're part of the 68% of people that watch the channel, you're not yet subscribed. Maybe you're tuned in for the first time here today. I really hope if you enjoy this reaction, maybe you'll stick around, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see the full length reaction to this, you can check it out over on Patreon or become a member of the channel. It gets you access as well. So watch along format, sync up your own footage with the time code, see my reaction to the entire thing. You get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel as well as access to actually put forth suggestions and vote on what movies we cover here on the channel. Along with that, you also get monthly Q and A's, behind the scenes footage, I'm trying to make it worth your while since you are going out of your way to support the channel, helps us grow, expand, get help with the editing and increase the types of videos and reactions that we can do here for you guys. But of course, I know not could do that and it's simple we can help us out is just by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos, because that does go a long way with helping you to promote the channel. With that all said and out of the way, guys, let's hop into episode nine, Collectors. Here we go. I had a dream that I spent the night with Hector. When I woke up this morning... Oh my god. What is happening to us? I think it's me. Man, the palace is gorgeous. Rose just got Lyda pregnant. <laughs> Rose is weakening the walls between the realms. You gonna tell the boss? No. No? It's none of my business. Now's not the time to be fighting. Not when there's a vortex getting people pregnant and runaway nightmares doing God knows what. <laughs> <laughs> you want another one? But don't we have to meet Rose? Well, Rose is going to meet us. Here? I have to go to a work thing. It's a convention. <laughs> you run away a lot. I do too. I'm running away right now. You are? And once we get to Rose, we don't have to run anymore. 
Are you ready to meet your sister? I fucking love Boyd, man, dude. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. Are you okay? Where are you? We're at a hotel in Georgia. Tell me the name of the hotel. Serial convention. <laughs> That's great. What you looking for? It's a serial convention. I thought there'd be cereal. <laughs> are you still hungry? Have a seat uh, over there and we'll get you something to eat. I wouldn't. I thought this whole issue was dead and buried in the six. That's when Harry <laughs> the lights. I could have died. He slays me, that guy. <laughs> All this dialogue's hilarious. You may want to advise him to steer clear of the convention areas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only a little. Uh, light is not feeling well. Uh, I believe America is a very large and excitable place. Uh, and a young person traveling alone. What if he's this third nightmare that we don't really, we haven't seen I anything should of? enjoy the role of amateur knight errant. I have my sword. Or he could be the prodigal. Or just a guy. I actually got to meet him once. You met the big bad wolf? Hey, fun. I see you've met my young friend. He and his sister are my guests and under my protection. <laughs> are we good? We're good. I'm glad to hear it. Come on, Jed. And home is England? You sound English. Thank you. Yes, you know, to me, the object of travel is... Hmm. 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 What was that? A quake in the dream? I guess if earthquakes happen in real life, they can happen in dreams too, right? We call those nightmares. Come here. Does this look like a nightmare to you? They never do at first. Ooh. There's a big old fault line coming right to you. Holy crap. I know you're waiting to see if the Vortex will lead you to the Corinthian and Fiddler's Green. The way she led you to gold. Fiddler's Green, that's that's the one. She's putting cracks in the foundation. This is the Vortex. I assure you. Hmm. She could have weakened the veil between and something could have creeped in. I'll ask him to see about making you Jed's legal guardian. So no one can take Jed away again. Would that be all right? What if this is all unity? What if they were to live here? Here? Yeah. You could find us a house. Rose could write. Jed could go to school. I could adopt them. I'm going to have a life after all. You're going to London? Maybe not. What if he doesn't like me? Or worse, what if I don't like him? I'm just so impressed. You allowed yourself to be happy for nearly a minute. <laughs> The only thing I remember about him is he used to love chicken fingers. He's probably completely different now. <laughs> nope. You're okay? I can't go with you. Oh, no, no, trust me. You don't want to. It's just a bunch of boring grown-ups down there. No, no. There are a few rules. No civilian names. Secondly, we don't shit where we eat. <laughs> Nobody does any collecting until the convention's over and you're at least 200 miles away. <laughs> On an unfortunate note, the family man who was to have been our guest speaker this year has not been able to make it. I wonder who that was or if it was just some random. Gives me great pleasure to be able to present our new guest of honor, the Corinthian. I'm boring you. Not at all. Oh, good, because I do love a paradox. Chesterton did too. They take charity, for example. Yeah, he's gonna talk her into sleep. Tell Lucien she was right about the source of the tremors. And that I'm taking care of it. Oh no. Hector, look who's here. 
You remember I told you about Lord Morpheus? What do you want? He wants us to leave. Why? Because a ghost cannot escape his fate by hiding in the dreaming. How can Matthew being here isn't causing any issues? You're not going anywhere. Enough. Conceived in the dreaming. One day, I will come for it. No, you won't. You will do nothing. This dream is over. You killed my friend. How did you? You said that a vortex can create universes or destroy them. So I suggest you leave my universe the fuck alone. <laughs> this dream is over. Oh, God. Gilbert and I just got to the hotel. We're going to grab Jed and come right back. Okay? I mean, I feel like it's so easy to realize how fucked up this is. Like, that this isn't okay. <laughs> or the Corinth, the Roman city of vice? Or are you just into leather? You know, all of the above. <laughs> and that's... Not the boogeyman. The boogeyman's dead. But how do you know? He mentioned um, a blog called Chased. Leave it with us. What the? An imposter. I'm just looking for my brother. I'll run in and run out. I can't let you do that. I'll just be a second. There are no kids in the convention area. I would know. <laughs> Funny thing, she has her own name tag with uh, Corinthian, though. Any extra cash is nice, but we don't do it for the money. We do it because we are called to do it, because we love doing it. <laughs> I use the same skills as anyone else here. Intelligence, preparedness, and brute force. <laughs> who lives and who dies, it's up to God. God tells me to do it. God tells me to kill them. <laughs> could we watch you work? Oh, of course. Or we could work together and share the experience. <laughs> I would love to see the reaction to him gnawing on some eyeballs. Oh no. They do recognize each other. Oh, I'm, he's one of the two, like I was saying, I'm assuming. And there are quiet places to take them to when no one will bother you until you're done. And if you can't find any kids to play with you, you can always go on the rides. I don't like hearing that, man. Fuck that. I'm looking for my younger brother, and I was wondering if maybe you've seen him? Oh, you're Rose Walker. I have your room key right here. And a message from Gilbert. He says he's very sorry, but he had to go home. Oh, he just fucking saw the Corinthian and dipped. Thank you. Man, I love every time we come back to the visual. Huh. <laughs> so good. She's found them both. The Corinthian and Fiddler's Green. Where? Okay. You know? Fiddler's Green told me. Oh, he came back. I like the eyes. Oh. oh no, Jed. This one's mine. You okay? What's wrong? They're after me. Who, who's after you? Come on. You'll be safe in my room. Fuck! She's a vortex. What have I done? He's... He's going to have to kill her. God, this doesn't get better, does it? Jed? Rose! He's mine, Fred! Stop! We will play it! Me? Go! Oh. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to hurt you! You're safe with me. You got skeletons in your closet. 
<laughs> Dude, this episode was insane. Oh. Like, I understand where Rose is coming from, this outsider coming in and fucking with their lives or whatever, but, like... Like, it's not right. <laughs> like, it's like... I don't see the logic in like her being like, well, what we're doing is okay. Living in the dream world's okay. Your dead husband in the in the dream world's okay. This the baby thing is a little bit gray. But still, like I don't know. Like I feel like I, I <laughs> there's a more humane and like better bedside manner way that dream probably could have like Handled that situation. But I'm on his side with that. I just don't think the way that he handled it is all that great. And. Ooh man. This convention has been <laughs> fucking uncomfortable. But so fucking funny. At the same time. Oh my god. And Jed has no idea what's going on. And then he walks in on the Corinthian. Just like going to town on this dude. And then Funland dude just starts chasing around, trying to be like, oh, it'll be safe with me. Oh, I knew there had to be something strange with Gilbert, man. Him locking away, him like keeping to himself and all this stuff. And then just the weird, very kind of cartoonish English man thing he had going on. It definitely was out of place, especially with the sword cane. So I definitely thought he was either one of the runaway dreams or maybe he was the missing, the other missing sibling. The prodigal. So it was one of the two. So it was Fiddler's Green. What what name? What's that name? Is that a reference to something? Because I, I don't know. It doesn't ring any bells for me. But yeah, he's... So he was an arcana. Ar, they, they He made it seem like all three were nightmares. So I guess two were nightmares and one was just like a really powerful dream or something like that. He was the heart of the dreaming is what he said when he described it. And yeah, he is not incorrect dream has changed he's very conflicted he's very torn which i guess is why i get these multiple reads out of him based on like his actions very much so the betraying a lot of his emotions a lot of his expression a lot of his growth that we've seen uh throughout certain episodes and how it does seem like maybe he's not but i think he's i so i think i might be on the right track with my read on him on why he's Kind of acting the way he's been acting since he's been back, despite some of the things we've seen, as particularly in the death episode, like when going through that whole thing and then him returning to that immortal guy uh, that he admits is a friend. Like we've seen him grow, we see him change, and that was even kind of called out by Fiddler's Green here. Whenever he was like, "The Morpheus I know would have never came and admitted he was wrong, let alone came and apologized to you." So he. Some he is learning, he is changing, but like part of him is afraid to acknowledge that because it might be seen as weakness in his realm, and that's already being challenged by the things and the people that he's created that he lords over. His rule is being challenged to the point where Matthew goes straight to Matthew and Merv feel more comfortable going to Lucian before they feel comfortable going to Dream. Because he was gone. He abandoned this place. He let it fall to ruin. So they're like, well, we are used to working with Lucian during your absence. And they want to keep that going because who knows? Maybe he'll disappear again. And he that's why he's like going extra hard to try to be firm and restore that respect and that air that he lost because he got captured. Like, they don't trust him. They find him on shaky ground, and the dreaming is now quaking because he's letting Rose exist and roam free because he was using her to find the other missing arcana. Which may or may not have been a great idea, but it worked in the long run. Um, and with Rose having turned him away because of his kind of a rash way he addressed the situation, 
regarding Lyda and uh, the quakes and the bridging of the worlds, it seems like uh, he may have been able to mitigate this a little bit differently had he been a little more diplomatic and warm. As he had he been a little bit more of that Morpheus he's been kind of molding into a little bit rather than King Morpheus of the Dreaming. Um, but we'll see. Corinthian now has Rose and Jed, and shit's going kind of crazy right now. And he can use her power to just fuck everything up. But like Fiddler's Green said, like, well, how do you, you either get Rose on your side, help her contain and control her powers and understand the responsibility of them, or you have to take her out. And I have to imagine that the way things have been building, we have to see it. I would have to imagine there's going to be a, an ending where Rose and Dream balance things out. I don't think, I hope at least, that this doesn't have to result in her death. Like, she is a special being. She's a special character. And we've seen growth with Morpheus that I would like to see him get to the point where... We can see some of that compassion shine through, maybe. I don't know. I really don't know where things are going to go. Is he going to come for that dream baby? He said he will. Which I understand, honestly enough. It sucks. It's tragic. It's painful. It wasn't... It's not anyone's fault, particularly. Should he keep it in the dreaming? But guys, what do you think of the episode? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us in our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that in all my social description box below. Follow me on each and every one of those. I'd really appreciate it. Remember to subscribe and stick around so you can tune in for the finale. Should be dropping tomorrow after the time you see this video. And guys, we got more stuff coming down the pipeline, so stick around. If you want to see the full length reaction to this, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gives you access as well. And speaking of, before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Sherritt, Ryan, Karen, Jason Coleman, Philip Vane, Yord, Corey Scum, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, and Raven McGann. Thank you guys so much for your continued support and everybody who's been following along on this journey. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care, everybody.